Hey friends, today's index card is grabbing one out of the pile. Um, I have a whole bunch and I just thought I'd grab this one. I'm going to throw a little bit of gesso on it because there's a lot of color on there and I want to kind of push that color back. So I'm just going to throw a little bit, a bit, whoa, a lot, a little bit of gesso. Uh, that's a lot of gesso. To do a couple things now with that. A little bit of gesso on it here to kind of push that into the background. So how I have all this color, it's kind of going to take away maybe from my, yeah I got a lot of gesso on the table now, for my project so I'm going to throw some gesso down and kind of push that red and yellow paint back into the background. So if I had too much on there, I felt. Now I could take, put some back. So now let's see how it's looking. So now I'm going to dry the gesso up. So for this card, I was basically thinking, what if I have a card that I did too much paint on or wipe up on and I want to do something with it, but it's too bright. So that's what I'm kind of showing you guys how to lighten it up. And then maybe even adding more or different um, colors. So I'm going to grab my sticks here, my twistable um, slick sticks. And maybe add some more color to them. So I can move it around my fingers. So now I'm adding some color to them. And the gesso is all dry. So if I had just put these colors on the red, the, the bright colors, it would have not shown. It would have taken away from the colors I want to add to it. I kind of just want to share that. Now I'm just going to throw some yellow in here. Now I'm going to go and purposely put too much blue on here that I don't want just to show you guys. So I purposely put way too much blue on there. So what I'm going to do to fix that. So I dried that up a bit, but I want to show you guys that I could put more white on there to pull back any of the colors that are too much and kind of blend them in again. So gesso is kind of really cool that way. So you can always use it as a little bit of a you know, to pull things back if it's too much. So you don't have to feel like you have to start all over. So there we go. So what I'm going to do with these guys is I'm going to, I was kind of playing with that today and I was like, I want to do that. So I'm going to stamp this um, tissue paper here to put on top of my index card. So I'm going to grab and it's not going to be a great stamped image because I don't have a padding underneath, but I could grab a paper bag just to have a little bit of a cushion. There we go. Just so I don't have to put my padding on top of my gesso because I might use it still. So I'm going to stamp out some images onto here. And I'm going to be very randomly and not even care about where they go really. So I'm using archival ink. And I'm just kind of randomly putting place in them here. As if they were like bought tissue paper and you'd be just random everywhere anyway. You can design your own tissue paper. Let's 
So I'm just kind of randomly putting moves forwards and backwards numbers. There we go. A wing there. So that is that for the stamps. I think. I'm going to put a bug in here. Just because I can. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry. So if you have pattern paper that you like, um, that's kind of where I'm going with this, is you can put it on here. I just kind of quickly made this, but you can even use um, bought pattern paper. You can use um, sewing, like the sewing paper. So I'm just going to put some Mod Podge on here. Nice and thick too. Just not, I don't want too thin. Nice and thick. And this is Deco Art Matte Mod Podge. Then you got to kind of figure out where you want your pieces. So. This is kind of just like a, a play, but um, I'm going to blend this tissue paper into the background a bit more too. So now I'm going to dry that up. So you can design your own tissue paper and then have it all waiting. You don't have to worry about designing it right then when I was do doing it. Um, and then it'll be all... You can kind of still use it no matter what's on there and how random your stamped images are. So that's how it's looking. So now I want to kind of add something else to it, but it's kind of very dark. So what I was thinking I was using the gesso to kind of giving yourself a little bit of place to put more color or more in a focal image or whatever so that is that so I lighten it up and I still have a place to put whatever so I'm just gonna sh that's how I show you that gesso can be used in that way of um, lightening up your card yeah, you can still see it and give, giving more room for adding more stuff. So I'm still working on this. Now I have this nice background here. I've got a lot of color in there. So I'm not sure, but I found, I got this paper given to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's beautiful. It's all these photos of things. And it is paper. <laughs> it is paper. But it was given to me in mail, so I'm thinking I want to add this to my iCat. And um, I might have too much blues in here, so I'm going to lighten that up a bit more. And that's the thing. So you just kind of put your colors on there, and you're not... I am not. didn't plan for this picture, but there is a bit of a rainbow in there. A very, very... Oh, you guys can see a very light bit of a rainbow in there, but the blue is just a little too strong. So I'm just going to go over that a bit. And then I still have that all that stuff in the background though guys so that's the cool part although I'm not sure if I'm gonna have that I don't think I'm gonna have that um, rainbow in there I was just thinking about having the plane itself So I'm just going to cut that out, kind of a fussy cut. I'm not sure if that's the pole supposed to be in that plane, because now it's a telephone pole, isn't it? But that's okay. It's going to be too hard to cut it out of the planes, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Normally I'd cut with my X-Acto knife or my, but I have a lot of room there that I can get away with just putting my scissors through without damaging the photo. 
Let's see what I can do here with that. I wanted to cut it out, but yeah. Gonna get it in the corner here a bit, but I'm gonna round it off. So I kind of could manipulate my picture to look how I want. I got a little gesso on there. Gesso fingers. Um and then handy to have a little teeny me board for this. Now if my exacto knife or my craft knife is sharp enough I would be able to cut it hopefully be able to cut the center out and I actually am going to cut the telephone pole out from behind it and there we go one piece just need the plain um, Pieces, not the telephone pole. Second piece. You can hear the girls playing, Carly and Cora playing with the train set upstairs. So you can cut anything out, like whatever you guys have images of, of people and whatever, or stickers or whatever. I'm just using this plane and I wasn't planning it I kind of want to show you guys how if you have an index card that has a bunch of color on it or something like that you can kind of play with it and um, no matter what the background you can really fit it into your project so that was kind of where I was going with this don't know if I made that come across but so yeah you can really play with things and build up your um, images from there. Now I'm actually going to go grab a stamp and put more stamping in. So if I was playing with this and I had all these things kind of pre-done and playing with color, that's how I can kind of make it to fit whatever I want. And that's kind of what I was going with this was, um, you know, I had a bunch of color on index card and, and then I kind of put it down, pulled it back, so then I can see whatever I want to see on the index card. Now I know where I'm going with this index card. I do have this traveler and I seriously did not plan this card um, prior to this. I just, now, oh, let's see, let's do this. So now I've got my, my card, the train. Nope, don't like the train. That's okay. This is your, um, just give the ink a little dry here. <laughs> this is the whole point to this, is that you didn't wreck it. You just kind of pull it back a little bit. See how that's what I mean? It's in the background. And if you wanted a little more color out, you can do add more color back in. Or I mean, you want more color in. Because, you know, I've been pulling gessoing. Add more color in that will fit your project a bit more see thanks it's not rent racked you can still add you can still still pull more stuff in that's the trick is that you could just you could just keep piling it on see I put some more gesso just now on the camera so then it's not totally and da just dabbing my finger in there totally taking away from the okay let's see if I like this image a little better there we go suitcase so like I got a lot of images on there now but I got a lot of four like you know in the front here and got some in the back and that was my whole thing. So that's great. Good. Put a drop of heat. 
perfect. So that was the whole the whole thing. I want to lighten this up just a bit. This suitcase. You could still tell it's a suitcase. Still want to use the image. And heat that up. And then I'm going to add whatever colors I think I want to add more of. I'm actually wanted the yellow. To my project. So this is kind of how I don't know. This is kind of like ah, Benny. This is kind of what I'm trying to say is like you can build something that's kind of pre-done and fix it to what you want. And there, that's what I want. A nice little. And like I said, if I all of a sudden I put too much color in there, I can just totally tap my gesso. And say you're out of here. You know what I mean? There you go. So that is my project today. It's kind of like not a, it's kind of just little tips on how to play with something that was totally there and darken up. And you still have like, you know, layers and layers, mixed media layers and layers. So it's still there. But and that's how mixed media is. It's just tons of layers until we're happy. So you use what you got in your background and then you pull out, pull in what you want and that kind of thing. I'm just going to go over my plane. You guys can do this with any, anything you want. It doesn't even have to be a picture of a whatever. It could be a photograph. It could be anything. It could be just a little cut out, a punch out, whatever you want. But that's how you've got, now I have like the bugs in the background. You can still see some things. It's pretty cool. It's got a lot of depth in it. And that was, you know, something that you really like in your cards. It's a lot of depth and a lot of visual texture. And I like that. Uh, and you guys recall I received these um, stamped images. I'm going to use a couple of them to finish off this index card. And like I said, I didn't really have a plan, but now I just want to play and add them in. So this is kind of like just um, spare the moment play thing. And you guys, it's so fun to do that. And I'm going to put these things in here and add them to my project. And I'm going to spray this one with a little bit of brown. I'm hoping I'm going to combine it. And this is food coloring. And dry that up. And now I've got that brown. And that just that's just that spray. And I dried it right up. I still got the markings here. And that's going to go really well with my um, plain because it's a dark color. And then I'm going to probably add some of the colors I have into my card with these. Blend them in. The twist sticks. They blend really nice on canvas. On paper, they're a little less blendy, but you can add some white over it. There's white color, and that would blend it in really nice. But I'm just going to use the three colors I have in there already. And then I'm going to probably put some wet my finger just a tad, blend that in. And I got a little bit of gesso left so I can add that to make it just match. There we go. So that's my card. Cherish the moment. And I think I will just uh, ink up the edges. But they're going to show you. They're going to show you that you don't have to have, you know, a blank canvas to start with, or you can change your mind and have like use any kind of paper collage for a background and really lighten it up so then you can do something totally different with it or you totally change your mind in the middle of a project it is you can do it so 
I know this is kind of a long video for an ICAD, an index card, I mean, but I thought it was a fun play today. I'm just going to throw that in here like that. And that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm just going to throw my glue on there. I'm I'm thinking that's what I want to do because I want to yeah. Um put that right there. Yep, just put that right there and then I'm just gonna do a trim and that's it. And then that's that's it. I'm gonna put some brown twistable. You guys can use inks, paints, whatever. I'm just using this because well, it's pretty easy. On the gesso it moves pretty good and on the um, glue, Mod Podge. So I just want to blend in some of that brown, pull it around. And that's my card. Really. I'll probably go over it a little bit with black. And I got a mess here. And um, I might go just along the edges with my white and kind of blend them in. I got a little bit of brown on my fingers, so that's okay. It works out. Just pull a little bit of that highlight through. That's going to stay. It doesn't always have to be dark. Dark edges can get lightened up. But that is that. It really, the white, just so even the, this white really helps make things blend in. And that's the whole point was to get everything to kind of feel like it belongs. And just getting a little bit more darker edges here. If I was patient enough to let it dry. Just throwing in a little bit of shadowing on the edges because I don't want to go over that white too much. I'm going to make it pop a bit. And that's about it, guys. I might have to wait to get it to go on the edge. Let's see, this one might be just not there. Just doing a little sketching on the edge here. And it goes with the edge too. If you put something too much and you don't want it in there, you can always gesso it a little bit over and pull it out. If there's any gesso left here, you can always just kind of blend it in, pull it out, whatever. I'm just adding a little touch just to show you the difference. Just a little gesso does. Just a touch. Anyway, that is it. I hope you guys like this little project. Um, and yeah, try to um, do it. Do where you do a bit of a gesso background, adding your, your stuff, and then maybe having a busy background adding some gesso to you block it off but then still having a little bit of that background back there and putting some other stuff on top and seeing how that works layering gesso layering so i hope you guys like it i will just finish up by doing my edges very dark and i will talk to you guys later and i'm just being very rough with it because i don't mind the black coming right in there Just playing with it. And like I said, I can even go over it again. There you guys. I hope you guys like this little project. And yeah, a couple of Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.